Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I'm going to show you a professional trick on how to create custom overlays that fit your image and even textures for any kind of object in Affinity Photo with ease. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and if you want to learn how to edit photos, you came to the right place. Before we get started, you might know that right now I'm in Thailand on a photo adventure and if you want to follow what I'm doing, click on the link below for my vlog channel where you can see the videos, ask me questions and be on that adventure together with me. Also, later today, my bonus files for the new creative pack Neon Revolution are dropping today. So check your emails and have fun with them. OK, let's get started with the tutorial. The photo, by the way, was provided by Simon, who's a community member for the last photo challenge. Thank you for that. OK, so how are we going to do that? First of all, what we need is a file to source from. So go to file and then place and I've already downloaded a file with flames in it. Let's put this in here. And the important part here right now is that you resize that to the size that you want to apply it to the image. It has to be at the right size. And also you want to have it on top of the other layers. So for example, there isn't any fog or anything other overlaying it. So this is actually a clean source to sample from. This is really, really important. OK, next step is to create a layer on top of this layer with the flames. So go over here to the icon add pixel layer. Click on that and I will also rename that to flames like so. OK, here comes the cool part. We're going to use the clone brush tool, but there is a special trick to that. Now you can see usually when you click here on uh, you hold alt and click on a source point like so um, and you want to set source to layers beneath. This is why the flames need to be below the layer where we put them, the pixel layer. You can see that right now when I'm painting something here, this is painting that flame. Then I go over here and this is painting something completely different. But we want to have a way to easily source without being worried that we might run out of source image, right? So what we are going to do here is that we unhook this point here where it says aligned. And when I do this, you can see here that right now I have sourced the same place holding alt and clicking with that little um, target icon. You can see right now because now the aligned is turned off this will always sample the same flame. This makes it super easy for us to now simply paint the flames onto our antlers. Now, here's another thing you might realize is that we still have this black background. How do we fix that? Here are two important things you want to notice. First of all, when you select the flame image, make sure it has a completely black background and then you want to set the pixel layer where you're going to paint these samples onto to either lighten or screen. So you can really decide what is better for you. Let's go with lighten here. That looks pretty nice. OK, cool. So you can see that that works. Now we are going to paint a little bit of flames up here onto our antlers. I'm not going to do all of them just to show you how that works and also give you some extra tricks. Now, first of all, you can see that I can paint them in here right now, like so with no problem like this. And you can, of course, also erase the parts you don't need afterwards. You can see here I have here my eraser brush. Let's make this a little bit bigger, make it soft at the edge and I can simply zoom in here and I can um, paint out everything where I think, well, there shouldn't be flames. So they are exactly where I need them to be. Right. So that's very easy. Now, here is another thing that is really important for you to understand. Usually you have your clone brush and it says normal up here in the blend mode. But this is not ideal because we want to paint in flames in a custom way. And you can see if I would do this, I would paint over the flames that are already there, including the black background. That is not good. So what we want to do instead 
is to go up here and set this also to lighten as a blend mode so the brush will interact with itself. This clone brush is going to interact with itself and you can see right now that the flames are fitting onto the other flames with no problem. Here is another thing you want to realize. Right now the flames are going, well, not directly in the area in the direction that we want to have. So what you can do is you can use your arrow keys to rotate that. You can see I can rotate where I'm sourcing from. And so this, first of all, gives me an ability to put the texture in the direction in the way I want it to be. But it also gives me the ability to create more versatile textures because I can simply um, variation and uh, make a variation where for example i put this sideways and then for example i click here and put a little bit more in here so this will create an additional element to the texture that gives it more variety right also you don't have to always work from the same source you can simply go down here and then select another source for example over here go back up here and then go on and start painting again wherever you want to have your elements like this you can see this is super easy and then you can of course delete the parts and you can be very very creative with that and create anything you want now how about the textures i was talking about before well let's select another file here for lava real quick let's get switch to text so here is our lava file and again this is kind of the same process but there is an extra trick to that that you want to understand first of all again make this the right size that you want to have that you want to sample to put it up here but then of course create a new pixel layer on top of your lava layer that's important so we call this lava so we know what it is now here's the important part you want to make a selection around your endless there's a very easy way if you have already removed the background and put them in here as a layer simply hold control and click on that layer and this will create a selection from the layer so you can see now we have a selection around the endless there's a little bit of part here that's not fitting you can fix this if you want to for example with the freehand tool click on add up here for the mode and then for example hold your shift key and then click and click 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 so with this we created um straight lines and now you can see i have fixed that area so you can work super precise with that if you want to we are going to click on our pixel layer use our clone brush tool and select our source point down here let's go like this let's say for example we want to start with this point down here so right now you can see that our texture is going in the same way as the original file and of course we can use our arrow keys to rotate this until we are happy with that and then simply start painting away on our image to add that texture to our endless here and like i said you can source this you can click as many as often as you want you also can reduce the hardness this will help you a lot um, to just blend the elements with other parts of the texture and you can see here by doing that i can have more unique textures and really create that in the way that I want to. You can see here I'm just adding some parts, some stripes, for example, this horn over here. I can also zoom out, go down here and select another source if I want to, and then start to paint up here again and make these textures really unique so they are exactly in the way that I feel they should look. So you can see here we can be very powerful, very playful with that. And if I deselect that, you can see we have created a nice texture that exactly fits our um, antlers. But of course, at that point, you can also use your blend mode, for example, also screen or color dodge or any kind of blend mode that you feel like is fitting how your texture should look on the antlers. This is very, very powerful, super quick and easy. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next tutorial. Bye!